It looks like so, it's, I guess we should be prepared. We might have to do this again at 7.30. Well, I will tell you that it looks like it's working better this time because last time when I clicked on record, it did not give me the option to record to the cloud. It only gave me the option to record locally. And this time I can record to the cloud and we paid for 100 gigs of storage. Maybe that was the reason the recording got filled. I don't know. It shouldn't have been a free meeting though. Who knows? And no, you can't talk to anybody at Zoom because they're overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that might be something to do with it. But I know Donna's trying to connect tech right now. She's on FaceTime trying to. Oh, it looks like most people are doing that. There's Marcy. Um, I don't, oh, there she is. Hi, Kathy. Jeff Shedd should be coming on in a minute. And Kimberly. Okay. I think I got, I typed and Jeff Laura. twice and both of your names just popped out going as fast as I could. There's Jeff. Yep, and Troy, we're good. Elizabeth, do we have to repost this somewhere publicly? Yes, I think we should do that. Hang, I'm gonna. Uh... My cat just jumped up on me and got cat hair all over me. <laughs> okay. So, I am going to post, I'm gonna send that link to Jen Lackery right now. Okay, I'm back. There's Donna. Hi, Donna. I'm back. And I just don't see Laura. I might text her quickly. Elizabeth just sent out an, e an email, and that's how I get in. I couldn't get in off the calendar. Yeah, and I sent a text to the school board of a direct link, so, but we'll see. All right, I'm sending this. I don't know what happened. Never had that happen before. Yeah, yeah. No, no. And we, we've had our two-hour meetings, too, Donna, like during the day. Yeah, yeah we could, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? So I just copied the link to this meeting and I sent it to Jen and I have like I sent her an email when this when it gave me the five minute warning that it may be ending and she said she was going to go in and try to fix it. So I wasn't surprised when it ended and I was sort of ready and she I think is going to post this to the school department website. All I know is I want to be Kimberly. Look at her on a I couch know. all cozy. <laughs> I know I don't have an office or a desk, so yeah, I'm all cozy on my couch. <laughs> I have a well, Marcy, fun table Marcy, next to me. I can start playing any minute. Marcy, can you go back in and give your answer that you gave? Yeah. Okay, I'll start back again. I was like talking on and on. I feel so stupid. Um, all right, Jamie, so I was looking at that because I was trying to see what the trend normally would be. Right, so and like 1920 is obviously the the one that drew my eye because it's the most comparative to one of your scenarios where right. you know the expense increase was 5.9 and the net to budget was 4.3 right 4.29 so right and so the the prior year before that that's the huge anomaly right, right there because of the cut yep yeah that 2.1 percent there and then the the effect on the property tax rate is 8.1 so what i was thinking it it could be related to is the assessed value, but I still have to do some research on that because I want to find out what the historical trend is, what impacts it from year to year more than um, just the, ex the drive of the expenditures. I was analyzing the state subsidy impact of the property tax side. I just didn't, I didn't know if it was like related to the assessed value more. Um, Cause you know, there's like a huge jump notice there. Yeah. And then to there. And I just feel like that's a driving force behind what's going to affect that property tax rate at the bottom line. Okay. So I'll, I'll research it more because I was going to call Clint about it because this value, this 1.741 is still preliminary, right. but it is significantly higher than the last three years. Right. So I think that's where the answer is, but I will definitely get that for sure. Okay. So I appreciate Marcy looking into that. And the only thing that I can say is that we tend to not have the the actual tax impact until everything 
happens on the town side. So these numbers that are highlighted in green are not the numbers that you would look back into our budget binder and see oh. because whatever magic happens over at the town the town side where everything gets put through the machine yeah. of things and then then the tax impact becomes well more I'll clear. definitely research that because I, I do I love the property tax rate aspect of it I'm just always curious about the effect like you said Elizabeth how it is impacted in different ways so I'll definitely find out those answers for us and his and historical reasons as well yeah, I, I mean, I think it's an interesting thing to highlight in your narrative as it further underscores the lack of control over external variables. Right. Right. So if, right. if you know, you're presenting at least one version that's uh, expense increase that's in line with previous years, it's not an outlier by any stretch. Right. But the impact to taxes is different. Well, obviously, there's other other factors there. So. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. No. Thanks. Excellent. Okay. So one thing I wanted to point out is that Marcy did send this PowerPoint presentation out to the board and it will be posted publicly, but if people want, but I printed it out because I need that um, in my life. But um, if you need that information as we're speaking, I think you can um, split your screen and look at it through your um, capelizabethschools.org. I think everybody got it. Okay. Um, but at this time, I think that it would be a good idea to have um, board members ask questions and have discussion about these different proposals. I would love to have um, Jeff explain the um, position of a volunteer. And I heard that the volunteer position was going down to the central office, which um, they are so busy. I want to know if they can handle it and if you can just speak to that cut of that position more fully. Thank you, Heather. I want to, before Jeff speaks, that was something that actually really jumped out at me, given how successful the volunteer coordinator and extending learning opportunities position has been. I was really concerned about that. So I'd love to hear Jeff talk about it. So I will say that um, I can't speak to the issue of volunteer coordinator and business office. Um, that proposal wasn't specifically mine, but it's what what generated me to think about a different way to frame providing the extended learning opportunities services. Um, originally, the teacher leader position was designed to be, in the original proposal, was designed to be a, a four-tenths position. So when the idea of moving the, the half of that role to the business office, I really was trying to figure out a way not to lose the ability to support the kids um, in providing extended learning opportunities. Plus also the idea of having that position be done by somebody who is a certified teacher, uh, which certainly could be a position that the current holder of the position could apply for. Um, is just to regularize it, the position, normalize it within the sort of the framework of existing positions because it has not previously been a position that has required teacher certification. It's been sort of a unique uh, on its own sort of position that, um, so the effort is not to try to eliminate or diminish the importance of uh, the desire to continue to support extended learning opportunities, it was, okay, we're moving the volunteer coordinator part of it somewhere else. Um, so let's think about, is that an opportunity to sort of give more solidity to this position, I would say. I will say just up front that, um, because I don't want people to be surprised, um, I think the person who holds this position is spending, has, has been spending particularly this year, a good portion more of his time on ELO work than volunteer coordinator work. 
Um, but given the overall budget scenarios, this was the best that I could come up with that would sort of solidify that position, put it inside the regular framework that we think about, make it a teacher position instead of something that everybody's always had a hard time understanding. Um, I, I, I'm confident that we can still get a high level of service from it, um, though it's framed a little bit differently. Has there been any discussion about uh, other, you know, about the vol the volunteer coordinator duties? And I mean, so we did hear about shifting it to the central office. Um, that's something that came up um, several years back. There, there were parents that were very concerned about uh, the screening of volunteers and um, spent a lot of time in policy committee, if you may remember. So how do we think we're going to be able to manage that successfully? And Donna has her hand raised too. <laughs> so we've talked a lot about that. Um, we're continually sort of reorganizing the business office. We have um, some change in staff at this point. And um, typically the volunteer uh, responsibilities are held within HR and it is a little more um, uh, people feel that it's a little more confidential not that not that it, confidentiality has been breached in any way with the system that we have um, but it is more of an HR piece so it would be HR working with principals um, so I, I I feel confident that that would be a good move Okay, and the volunteer trainings that have been periodically offered, you know, in the mornings and the evenings and that sort of thing, do you foresee that um, being continued going forward? Absolutely. Further questions? Bill? Yes. I thought you raised your hand. <laughs> I'm raising my real hand. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so I couldn't find the raise the hand button, so I was just raising my real Me hand. Me neither. I can't I see think it. it's in participants. <laughs> okay, so if you, if you go down to the bottom, you'll see participants, and it will bring up um, a list on the right-hand side. And at the bottom of that, it will say raise hand, and then it will say unraise hand. Mm, okay. Look, at Hope just did it. <laughs> oh, I see. Mine's in the more. Okay, the little dot, dot, dot more next to participants. Um, so just a quick question. I think you may have raised it at the very beginning, which was, um, do these new projections include changes in the assumptions on the health insurance increase? Because it was, you had 10% built in, right? And now we know it's no more than six. And then also any changes in the assumptions on teacher salaries for next year? At that higher number. So we do have, um, we did include the change in the health insurance down to the six. It would be really nice if it went lower than that, but we don't, we just don't have that information right now. So right now it's, it is at six. Okay. Okay. And we have looked at salaries and um, have in there our best prediction of what's coming. So, and, and, I'm, and I apologize because I don't have my, my, uh, binder it's in my office i haven't been I haven't been allowed to go in my office for a week and a half um my real office um what was the change did that change in significantly from the projected increase originally down if we just reduced the uh, health insurance portion do we see any saving I mean, much at all it seemed like that top line number was pretty similar if, so we, I didn't just, know, yeah. if we just reduced the um the health insurance and nothing else. If we just took out the say ninety thousand. Yeah. So our original, the original budget increase was seven point five. Five and what does it bring it down to? So just a, a percentage was about uh, I think two hundred ninety thousand. Mm -hmm. So you can see what eighty nine thousand. It's about a third of that. So. Okay. So it'd be a third of a percent. Okay. Am I okay. right on that, Marcy? I think yeah, I'm right. You're right.
Hope? Uh, so I, uh, my question is also around <clears throat> the elimination of the volunteer coordinator position. So um, traditionally, I mean, I recall in the, in the last two cycles at least, um, we sort of had a, a line in the sand of, of not cutting existing positions. You know, we're sort of, um, and so uh, what, what I'm seeing is, and I, I'm just kind of summarizing, we're in, we have some new positions that are remaining in the, in the budget, but instead of taking those off the table, we're reaching into existing um, positions and eliminating them. So I, I guess I, um, I'm highlighting that sort of because it has a um, it has a different it, it's a different um, it's it's quite different from taking a a, a future position off of the budget. Um, so, can you um, and I apologize if you already explained this, but it sounded like we were taking one piece of it and putting it in the central office, and then what was happening with the other uh, duties and um, can Donna or Donna Jeff, has her hand up. Well, I, I'll let Jeff answer that, but I just wanted to say that we are, you know, with the increased population at the high school, um, we're kind of in a unique situation. We have seen a, a pretty significant bubble and we have to have, we have to have teachers to uh, work with those students. So, um, so I think that's, that's where the hard decisions, um, were made, and maybe Jeff, you want to talk more about the responsibilities? Yeah. Um, so it is a. I mean, it's a difficult decision, but but in part, it's easy, honestly, as well, um, because to me, the non-negotiable is the school board has some class size and, and student load per teacher guidelines that we're trying to operate within. Um, I would love to be able to keep, in fact, I'd love to be able to make the ELO position a full-time position somehow, but we're going up by 42 students next year and we've already got a higher class size than, by a little bit than we're used to and next year, next year we'll be going up significantly. I, I mean, we could, the other alternatives would be to, um, put aside the desire to have to be able to offer French one to students. That would be one possible trade off or um, have class size in math go and, and student load per teacher go well beyond um, the, the school board guidelines. Even at a 0.6 increase in math, I still project that it's, very, it's possible that we may not be able to have any math teacher coverage in the Achievement Center next year. Um, and the science position as well, um, we, we just are going to have two additional sections of ninth grade science that we have to teach. And the science class numbers are noticeably bigger this year than they have been and, and, and really should be. That's not true in every section, but on average, that's kind of where we are. Um, I wish there were a, a different way and maybe somebody else has a better <laughs> imagination than me about how we can possibly solve that. but. I, I'm not, I don't see it. Um, I think the teacher leader position, so basically, yeah, the idea that is- That was gonna be my question, Jeff, to kind of loop back to what Hope was asking for was, I think that the answer is in the teacher leader position as far as the ELO responsibility. Right. So basically the current position of the, per, of the, of the combined volunteer coordinator position, the two parts of that position are being peeled off, the volunteer coordinator is going to the business office and the um, ELO part of it is going to the teacher leader. Um, that's a narrower area that, of responsibility that I, than I was originally envisioning for the teacher leader, but it's, it's trying to preserve ELO um, and to recognize its importance. And even in some ways for the long term, as I said, making it a teacher position, it gives it a, a sense of this is not being treated as some fish out of water special thing. This is this is a teacher just working with kids in different ways. 
So I wanted to kind of highlight the point that Hope was making about um, current positions. And um, I think one thing that the public can be really confident about is that our administrators and our superintendent don't just roll over whatever is working as the status quo, but um, hopefully people can appreciate that you all are looking at what we have and if there are um, ways to do it differently, if there are ways to do it better, that um, we don't just roll things over, but that we actually look at you know, how it's working, um, what is the bang for the buck sort of thing, as well as, you know, how well is it, is it just working with students, working with staff? So um, I will say for myself, I was really concerned when I first saw this. And then um, after hearing about it, I'm appreciative of, you know, the, the rethinking of the role and trying to I hate the word normal, but normalize the role as not being this sort of odd combination. And I think Hope's got her hand up. You'll need to unmute. No, she didn't want her hand up. I don't want to say, I'm done. I, I didn't take it down before. Oh. I'm fine. <laughs> okay, sorry, Hope. Um, further questions? Kimberly is trying to ask a question. Okay, I don't see. I'm trying to find my hand. I've got it's this okay. hand. I can't find the other one. <laughs> um, There's a I lot had of time. Before, but it's gone. Um, I just, um, so the team leader position, it sounds exciting and, and like there's a lot of opportunity there. And um, and obviously we've seen that there's a lot of opportunity for that extended learning opportunity to, to grow. And um, I think, you know, with our strategic plan, there's, you know, hope for more opportunity to demonstrate success. And I think that kind of falls within that. Um, and just wondering how you feel time-wise, um, one person kind of tackling both things will make out. Is that uh, is that too ambitious, or or do you think that it's? What are your thoughts? Jeff, do you want to take that one? Oh, you have to unmute. Jeff, you need to unmute. Well, oh, here we go. There okay. you go. I just can't see anybody right now. I, a couple minutes ago, I lost everything, so I still oh. can't. I still can't see anybody, but I'll. Uh, I think the question was. Sorry, I was fiddling around trying to figure out what's going on, and I'm still not sure. May I interrupt just a second, Jeff? At the bottom of your screen, do you see the the video camera in the blue box? Nope. Okay. Oh, I don't. I, no, I don't. I have a scroll down. I the thing is, I can't. I don't even have the where I am right now. I don't even see any of the controls. Oh, okay. I just see a. I'm at a picture that says launching. So. <laughs> well, we can see you and hear you. Oh, that's funny. Okay. All right. Well, I'll take that as so. I. So I think the question is, is this position going to be able to do what I originally envisioned for the teacher leader position and also for the extended learning opportunity? Um, I mean, I, I don't want to overpromise. I want to say I hope so. One of the things I've, I've thought about is um, with the student driven learning part of the extended learning opportunity coordinator position, um, one of the things that I've always wanted to see grow with that position is have the students who are um, uh, working on a project of their own and that sort of thing spend more time with community mentors um, and in between just sort of being um, 
or help to be organized by the by the ELO coordinator, but have actually more regular consultation with community mentors. So the additional work, and, and if that's, if we can actually move it that way, then theoretically we might be able to get more bang for the buck from, from the student driven learning program. In other words, have at least the same number of kids. It will require some upfront matching of students and hopefully being able to find mentors. But I have, I'm reasonably confident that in Cape Elizabeth that we could do that. In the meantime, I'm going to keep looking for you because I can't see anybody or anything. And any more questions? So while people are still thinking about it, I am on the page, sorry, Phil, in the budget binder. <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, the new programs and positions. And I'm looking at, as opposed to what new positions um, we might lose to get close to a 6% um, expenditure increase, I'm looking at what we would be able to add and so I just want to make sure I have that list correct. So at the high school, we would be adding a point for French teacher and the teacher leader, which has been discussed quite a bit. Um, 0.75 science teacher, 0.6 math teacher. And um, so we would have, and someone can help me with this, the um, literacy teacher, how would that, would that be combined with high school English? Can someone kind of help us out with that? Understand that one? Jeff, can you take that? See you on. Sorry, I, that went right by me. I finally found you again, but I guess. There you are. I, I apologize. I'm just, oh, no, I'm just trying to, instead of highlighting the, the, you know, what we couldn't get, I'm trying to make sure we understand what we can get with this, ex, with, with the expenditure budget, um, close to 6%. And so I sort of read through the, the list that's um, the most updated list in the new programs and positions portion of our binder. And the one thing um, that I didn't quite understand, it looks like we're still able to add um, at least part of a literacy teacher. Um, what does that have to do with English literacy and electives? I don't know if you could kind of iron that out for us a little bit. Yeah, I can try. Um, can, okay, can everybody hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, so I had originally proposed among the, the, the proposals that I, I had made were a total of 1.3 additional teachers of whom one would be a combined English slash literacy teacher and one would be a three tenths, which is equivalent to th teaching three semester courses of an elective class depending on student signups. Um, so what I've done is I've reduced that and what that's actually going to look like, we are just in the process, well we were before we went to closure, we were just in the process of gathering numbers. We've been set back a little bit. Um, I have to swing back to the guidance office uh, to see what those numbers look like. I anticipate this is just, this is only a best guess that ultimately what that, I asked Donna to, to hold off designating that specifically about what it's going to teach because it really depends on course signups. As I've explained to the board a number of times, you know, depending on how the numbers, how the numbers work, um, you know, I might only need two additional English sections and then I'll be able to get something else or I might need three English sections and then that will become what I get, but I'm, I'm hoping that 
maybe I can get two English sections out of that, and then I can get two semester elective sections, depending on where the additional demand is, whether it's computer programming or the arts or something like that. But until I actually see the numbers, I can't say for sure. But I know that I will need at the very least a three-fifths teacher, a six-tenths teacher spread around those couple of areas. And I just need to figure out where that is. Jess, that brings me to a point um, you sort of alluded to the um, kind of surprise increase in enrollment this year and the um, projected increase in enrollment for next year. Can you um, just highlight a little more, I think you've done a good job around English especially, but um, how, you know, how many of these positions that we really need to add due to um, enrollment and um, our desire to have reasonably sized classes and um, teacher loads? So yeah, 100% of the positions that would be added are for that reason. Um, there's, there is nothing here that really expand, it's all responsive to the fact that we are staffed right now for 511 students and we will have 550 students. Um, all, all of the teacher increases are related, directly related to that and there's nothing that's related to anything else. And to be honest with you, if, if, I, if I thought I could squeeze another year out of our existing staff without going through the school board guidelines in multiple areas, uh, honestly I would do it. Um, because I, I'm setting up for a difficult situation and Donna and, and the administrative team and I have talked about it because our increase, we have a bubble that's going to pass through in two years. And so in two years, we may have to make some reductions in some of the positions that we're adding now. Um, I would love to be able to squeeze more, squeeze more out of the staff, but I can't unless the board wishes me to go over the guidelines. Thank you for talking about that. I think it's important for um, the public to understand how we build these budgets. So I appreciate that. Um, so I'm gonna go back to that same page and we're looking at um, the next box down from the high school um, positions. The next box down is Pong Cove. And so we have one classroom teacher and that is 100% um, enrollment driven. Um, Jason, you can remind me, I believe that's uh, for fourth grade. Okay, sorry about that. You can hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, so that would be for fourth grade. So um, if, we, if we didn't add that, we would be at the very, very top and maybe in one class slightly over school board recommendations like right from the get-go. And we also, we always have more moving in. So we would be, um, we would be, uh, at the very top and then very quickly above school board policy with classes over 23. Um. Yeah, and then so the school counselor, you discussed that and um, gave us some really um, impactful research around the school counselor. Um, so if people will just remember and maybe you can just please just um, recap a little bit, you, you did a little bit of research um, with um, even EPS and um, our neighboring schools around what are acceptable um, number ratios of student per school counselor. Yeah, so what I have here is a um, recommendation from American School Counselor Association and it's one um, to 250 students. And so we have a want right now one to about 520. So we're, we're over double. And then um, we just did some research with several um, schools in Southern Maine schools. And 
they're all right around one to 250 or they have even one to less, like one to 230, um, one to 226, one to, uh, one to there's, a, there's a one to 300. So we're, we're kind of, our, our workers, um, our school counselor has about double the caseload of many of our comparative schools. And um, we've been having this conversation ever since I arrived. This is the third year where she's really saying, I love my job, but I just don't know how long I can, you know, hang in there. And so I really, and I, I mentioned it last year at budget season, I chose not to propose it yet for last year when we were preparing for last year's budget, but I, I highlighted it as a potential future budget item and it certainly came up again this year. Thanks, Jason. Yep. Um, Heather has her hand up. Yeah. Um, so this, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, this goes back a little bit to before Jason was speaking to when Jeff was speaking about the high school and um, Jeff, and this is kind of for the public and for us as a school board that um, the proposal of losing a position and reallocating it and um, doing that to adhere to the policy size that the school board has created for classrooms and all of that. Um, yes, I hear what Jeff is saying that we don't have a choice if we're gonna follow the policy that you need more classes. But another option, and I'm just putting this out there, is that we can support the higher budget as well. Like that is not the only option. The, the, another option is to be able to support something and say, well, we need all of it. And so I just, I just wanted to make that a point. It feels a little awkward coming after, so far after, but um, there are options and the options are to decide that all of it is worth it. Um, and that um, not just the teacher positions, but the ELO and the, is it the ELO? Extensive learning. Opportunities. Volunteer yeah. coordinator. Yeah, and the volunteer coordinator, right? So um, the 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 discussion that is being had is in response to trying to lower the budget to um, I'm trying to find my notes to this six point framework. But I also want to go back to where Marcy had created the chart. And if we were creating a flat budget, it essentially would look very similar to the initial budget that was created based on a little bit of give and take. So I just wanted to point that out um, as something to be said, that there are a few options. I agree, I don't, I don't think the option to go beyond policy is there because we've created the policy. But that being said, there are some options to adhere to that policy. That's all I wanted to mention. No, oh, and I appreciate that. And my desire isn't to um, seem like I'm only talking about 6%. It's that that's the first one that was presented. And so we're sort of exploring yeah. each one because we asked I them to do that work. Yes, and I didn't okay. think that at all. I was just, that's why right. this can be awkward because <laughs> It would have come and sounded a little bit better right at the time. Right. It's the dynamic of this kind of situation. So it's weird. No, I, and I, I don't I appreciate that. And and to kind of go all along with your point, I think that we can, you know, at, at the end of this conversation going through with, you know, what we do get if we have six percent. And then I think we have to um, we have to examine the five and a half and the five, however. Absolutely you know, however we may already feel about it. I think we've asked people to do that work and we need to examine it. Um, but yeah. on the same token, I think that there is a big difference between 7.5 and six. And, and so the, that putting it all back 
versus going to six might not be the only two options. We can give further guidance to say, you know, True. it's it, the possibility might be there for us to say, you know, you may, you know, what would it look like at 6.25 and then let the administrators decide what goes back in if yes. that's where we go. Um, the other option that we will talk about at the end of this meeting is if our health insurance number does come in lower than 6%. Do we um, ask the administrators to try to put something back in or do we pass that um, mm -hmm. savings on to the taxpayer? So those are, I, I agree, Heather, those are all conversations that we need to have. Thanks. So I'm just gonna keep moving down to through the original. Um, we were talking about the school counselor and I had something to say, but I can't remember anyway. So hopefully it'll come back to me. Um, I don't have it. So um, over to special services. Um, we have an ed tech two at Pond Cove, which um, is obviously going to be in the budget. It's um, a legal requirement, if that's my understanding, Donna or Dell. Yes. That is correct. Okay. And then moving on to facilities, Perry. It looks like we are um, in, in the 6% range, we're able to support adding some of the custodians that have been desperately needed. And I don't know if you're willing to just talk about those Three positions, just, I know you talk about it a lot, but I don't think it really can be explained enough for the public to understand um, where they work and what they do and, and what the situation is currently. Sure, the, um, and, I, and I believe, again, I don't have my folder in front of me this evening, so I'm going completely off what we've been talking about. But uh, the, the one position is actually, I believe it was labeled as a custodial position, that is a night maintenance person. Mm -hmm. And that would cover, we're looking probably to go with a shift that would be somewhere around 2.30 in the afternoon to 11 p.m. at night. And would cover both town and school needs. Um, the majority of their role would be to handle work orders of work that it's a little more difficult to get to during the day, uh, like in classrooms or offices where, you know, if there's something that is going to make noise that uh, you can't do it while we're operating. Uh, so it will give that person the ability, but it would also cover uh, um, the need uh, for call outs and things like that. Typically when the guys get a call out, it's at two hours of overtime uh, just to come in and it could be something that's only 15 minutes worth of work. Uh, but anyway, that that's the kind of the idea behind the maintenance person. It's we've had, we, I estimate us at around 47 different structures throughout the town. We currently have, including the supervisor, only four maintenance people to cover all of those items. This would be an additional, um, so it would also be beneficial at the time of day, but also beneficial to just increasing the size of that crowd. The custodians that I've asked for are just, again, to help kind of beef up the entire crew. We're, we're, we're stretched completely uh, as thin as we could get, and we have been for years. I, I would even say probably before my time with the school, but um, it's, it's just kind of beefing that up where right now we run into situations where somebody calls out sick or takes some vacation time or maybe has a personal item, uh, which happens quite often with, with the crew, that we do not have the amount of people to cover what we need to cover. And it, it's, it's, it's an extreme juggling act. Um, so I'm, I'm just looking to increase our crew all together and have both town and school sides benefit from that increase. Thanks, Perry. And um, this might be, uh, it's on the same topic, but it might be more for Marcy. Since um, these positions are, it looks like two of them are town and school shared. Um, does this do all these scenarios include the um, the town cost sharing because obviously the revenue side 
would have to show um, a transfer from the town? Um, so yes, Elizabeth, I, would you like me to pop up the, the, the um, budget impact where I can show you where that comes That would be plan? great. Because while it doesn't affect the spending increase, it should definitely affect the net to taxes. Yes. So right, can you guys see the screen? Mm -hmm. Right there is where we see the impact. So for that's the amount we receive for the, um, the positions that are, though those positions are also impacted by that transfer. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we have the, um, I, did, I did the transfer calculation based on all of Perry's new position requests and they're all on our side of the story. The only thing on the town side is they budgeted for that amount at this point and they wait for us to kind of let them know when we make changes to any of these uh, budget. So right now I have this amount um, in and Jamie, I sent this updated amount to John and Matt this past week for them to be able to kind of look at that to consider with so you guys will be considering that with your numbers. And Marcy, are you and John still kind of working on the yes. percentage? Yes. Um, so let me show you that document. Um, I feel like you guys would like to, you'd probably like to see this document, but I can find it. So here's the document that John and I have been working on. And this, these are the percentages basically that you'll be interested in knowing about. I don't know if you can see me, I've highlighted them there. So that's the percentage that I go off that 10% allocation is what John and I have been discussing. We've kind of used historical documents. We've been working off of what would be data that we can deal with, you know, concretely here. And that is, as you go down the line, so those are all the facilities so that amount, that amount, that amount, those are all, they, they total up to that 265, 271, along with all of the other things that impact the technology transfer and, and the central office for human resources for our payroll and accounts payable. Bottom line is a 341259, and I sure hope I have that as a total on our document. Well, okay. <laughs> well, I'm off a little there, but I will make sure that that is fixed. But that's, this is the allocation. So it's, it's this, this is the percentage that I work off of just knowing that that's what they're doing, especially for these positions. And this is broken out between the salaries, the benefits, and the retirement. For, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, for the different departments, the 9002, 003, and the 9005. So, um, uh, sorry. The, the public might not understand is that under the one town concept, there are uh, services that um, town employees provide to the, the school department, like plowing and um, field maintenance, although I always like to argue that the fields are community fields and not just school fields, and I say that every mm -hmm. time, but um, there, it, it gets murky when we try to figure out, um, you know, how much uh, cleaning detergent is, is used at one building versus, you know, let, let's say the middle school versus town hall, because it's purchased all together under the one town concept. So, um, well, I really appreciate that you and John are working on this and hopefully going forward, there will be, uh, my understanding is that over the next year, custodians right. are going to try to keep track of where they're actually spending their hours. Right. So that we can actually get um, some rationalization to go right. along with that 10%. 
right. off, offhand, I think 10% does not sound correct. But at the same time, when you factor in right. the plowing and the mo like, right. how do you know? So exactly, exactly, Elizabeth, that's, that's exactly right. I appreciate that you're continuing to work on this. And I so appreciate um, John being a part of this, the town finance manager. And um, so we, we probably will have a little bit better picture next year. Um, that's my hope. Um, it's almost like we almost have to not, not a true indirect, indirect cost rate plan, but that's this kind of is along the, the lines of it, kind of on the low side, but um, that's what we're really going to have to look at to be more realistic. But then again, like you said, it is the one town concept. So it's not truly going to mirror an indirect cost rate formula. So. Jamie has his hand up. Thanks, Elizabeth. I just wanted to um, underscore what you just said um, from the town council perspective. And um, for the rest of the board, if you're not already aware, and certainly for the, anyone from the public that would watch this, that this particular topic has been a frequent point of discussion at the monthly um, finance subcommittee meetings that we've been having jointly between the school board um, chair and finance chair and the town council chair and finance chair as um, you know, a known, um, I don't want to say issue, but I guess, you know, opportunity for better and more accurate accounting and budgeting um, going forward. And so um, it's something that, you know, for I think a number of years has probably been a, a little bit of a, um, you know, sore subject, certainly for, for Perry and, and Donna and others on the school board where, you know, are, are we getting adequate value for what we're providing or, you know, is the town um, you know, contributing its fair share and all that kind of stuff. So um, all around, I think it's, it's something that we're all collectively looking to come up with a better answer for. Thank you for that, Jamie. Mm -hmm. So moving just a little bit further down in the, the list, we had an athletic assistant and groundskeeper. And um, in the original request budget, it was um, a, a partial FTE in the 6% um, expenditure increase scenario. It goes to an hourly for savings. And um, oh, we didn't, we didn't highlight back at the uh, high school part that the ed tech one um, for the library would be changed from uh, one FTE to 0.5 FTE. So um, it looks like we would also keep the middle school indoor track coach in this scenario. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the only reason I'm kind of doing this is just like just looking at, you know, what we are able to do instead of talking about cuts, just talking about what are we still able to do. Um, and then we move on to the five and a half percent scenario. And let's see here. So additional cuts were made. Um, it looks like Perry had to cut out uh, painting at the middle school and painting at Pond Cove, which is sort of an ongoing um, yearly project that we had started several years ago. And it looks like one of the custodians was eliminated under this scenario. And then um, in the 5% scenario, it included all the cuts to additional positions um, as well as uh, two more custodians. Oh no, one more custodian and a high school science teacher. So that would leave um, just one custodian in the facility side and um, take away um, a high school need, if that's, if I'm correct, if I understand that correctly. So, 
so I guess I'm just pointing things out in, ho in, in hopes that the board now would like to have conversation. I think um, as people's comfort level dictates, are people willing to talk about eliminating any scenarios at this time? For instance, would people be interested in eliminating the 5% increase scenario? Or do you want to talk about it? Looks like Heather has her hand up. I don't know. Okay. I don't. Oh, I see it here. For some reason, I didn't see it before. Heather, please <laughs> go ahead. So um, I feel like the 5.0% uh, losing the high school science teacher proposal and the custodian, uh, especially in today's world, we, we, these custodians are essential. Um, and we cannot afford to lose two. I'm not even sure we can afford to lose one, but we can definitely not afford to lose two. Um, and the science teacher, it just will break our policy. And I, I, um, I feel like that is too far it's changing the district from what we want. And, and in my opinion, that is not in an acceptable range for um, discussion. And I am actually personally comfortable to say that I don't even think the five and a half is comfortable. Okay. Are other board members uh, willing to weigh in on um, scenarios that you are comfortable eliminating at this time? Hope. Hope. Sorry, I had the phone muted too. I agree with Heather. I would eliminate um, the five. Um, Um, what are we calling the scenarios? I, I don't like cutting, I don't like cutting supplies at all. I agree on the, the custodians. I don't want to cut that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm willing to say, let's take those off the table. Would you, uh, are you advocating to take the, the 5% and the five and a half percent off the table? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm about to start calling on people. Uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> I can just speak. I was waiting, raising oh, my hand. That's totally fine. So I'm, I agree with both um, Heather and Hope. Five and five and a half percent I'm not interested in for all the reasons stated. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nasser, are you willing to chime in or um, Bill? Yeah, I'm not muted, right? You are? Yeah. Um, I, I agree. I was just scrolling through just to just to begin, make sure I fully understood those two sets of cuts. And as constructed, I wouldn't be comfortable with either of those two lower amounts. Great. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Kimberly. You're showing up as um, Amelia. That's why I never see you. <laughs> All right, Kimberly. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my, um, yeah, my electronic situation at home is sort of grim, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want you to think schools. I was ignoring you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I agree. I think, uh, I think the, uh, what's presented for the 5% is, um, is insufficient, um, to really do what we need to do, um, for next year. Um, I struggle a little bit with the 6%, just, um, you know, I feel like our economic climate in the town has uh, shifted so drastically in the, or, or, you know, anticipated shifting going forward, just, you know, in, in the couple of weeks since we have uh, started these conversations. Um, so I'm very sensitive to the impact on, um, on our tax payers. Um, 
and I, um, so I, so I, I struggle a little bit with the 6% because I, I think that um, as far as offering the quality education that we need to offer or, you know, or we'd like to offer to our, our students 6%, um, I, I think is as low. I mean, I think going below that, we just really are losing uh, too much. Um, but I do struggle a little bit with the tax Im impact there. Thank you for that, Kimberly. Um, Nasser, any thoughts on this? Yeah, I was going to ask Marcy uh, in the, the, the chat to see if we could uh, see the three. Is it three options? I know one is six percent, one is five point four, and the I didn't. So there's, one of there's them another is one? around six percent. One of them is close to five and a half percent. Yeah. And then the other one is. 5%, which is okay. the last, it was 4.96, so it was pretty drastic. Yeah, yeah well, we all agree on that, and I, I agree with everybody that is uh, cutting any any custodian or any staff at this time is not acceptable. Um, so I agree with everybody. So does this mean that we uh, have to choose between the two now, or are we making a decision, or we still continue the discussion about the 5.4 versus the 6? Because I will, I will echo Kim's. I was like, rather stay at six if that's possible, close to six. So at this time, I was hoping for people to be willing to eliminate one or two scenarios, and um, most people have advocated. Well, I think it's unanimous. I'll throw my hat in there that we're not comfortable with the five percent, um, and I've heard most people say that they are also not comfortable with the five and a half percent. And so I think it sounds like that's where you are as well, Nasser? Correct. Okay. So at this time, I think what we need to talk about is, um, are we comfortable with the 6% and, and what additions and changes we're able to do with our budget at that 6% range? So are we comfortable with that? Um, do we want to ask the, su the superintendent to make further revisions. Um, and in, in that discussion, we can also talk about uh, the possibility that our health insurance number does come in lower than 6% because we have a couple of options with that. If our health insurance number comes in lower, we can ask the superintendent to gather the A team and um, see what they agree to add back in while not going above that 6% threshold, just using that kind of found money if, if we get any, which we all sort of hope we do. Or the other option is we are, we tell the superintendent we are really, we're comfortable. Um, we feel good about this and at, at that 6% level and that if we get a lower health insurance number that we just um you know that that the the spending increase is now lower and the tax impact is lower um, and then the third option is to direct the superintendent to get back into a meeting with the a team and um, come up with another scenario that might be higher than six percent I think Heather wants to say something. Heather, I've been, oh, I, I was muted. I was saying Heather, Heather. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you. Um, thank you, Laura. Thank you, no Elizabeth. Um, I'm wondering if, um, if we eliminated 5% and we eliminated five and a half and we're at 6% and the original was seven and a half. That's a big jump. And I'm wondering if there is a middle place between six and seven and a half that I, 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 I don't like asking for more work. I know you guys are all so busy, but that seems like a big jump between seven and a half and six. 
And I'm wondering if there's a place in the middle where maybe um, we can gain a tiny bit more uh, for our money. So I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, does anybody want to speak to that, Donna? So I'm sure we would be happy to work on that if that's the way you want to go. <laughs> a tiny bit more if somebody else's expense, of course. Uh, yeah, it's a good, good option. I agree with 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 you. Um, I was asked, I shared, I sent in a, a text to Marcy if we could have the option six up again. I'd like to see the, uh, the taxes option, what it will mean for tax payer. Um, and I had another question about the six option. Um, so that would be the sheet with the, the yes. spending increase. Next yes, to I the will share impact. it. Yep, sorry. Sorry, Nasir, I didn't no, see your. Okay. Um, no, it's okay. Um, you wanted to see this, um, yeah, this, this one? one? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Okay. Support property tax, okay. And one last question. Uh, I know that uh, Donna had mentioned that the negotiations are anticipated to a good good anticipation. Uh, is that still 90% accurate, you think, Elizabeth? Or are we going to have any more surprises, good or bad? Mm. I always want to say that there won't be any surprises, Nasser. <laughs> Um, I, can say, I think that the, the estimate is good. Yeah. That's nice to hear. Okay. So would anybody else like to weigh in on um, Heather's topic about going a little higher than 6%? I'd like to say something. So, so we talked about uh, that that is was quite a big jump, and I don't have the figure written down in front of me. But what was the jump last year? Can you just remind us, Elizabeth? Oh, the original, okay. and then where we ended up. What was that differential? Oh, I don't oh. know if we have that. I know you end you ended up at a five point nine percent increase. You started at like I think eight. 8 I thought seven, maybe. Yeah, I think yeah it, was I, it was about eight percent. So that was going at a differential of two percentage points. Now we're at 1.5. I feel very comfortable at the six. Thank you. So one thing um, I wanted to highlight and, and not, to, not to sort of rain on Heather's parade and uh, was, it sounds like some of the, some of the sort of, um, I hate to say cuts because they weren't really cuts, but some of the um, rethinking were preferred. Like um, I think I heard Jeff Shedd say that the um, computer programming teacher preferred Chromebooks anyway. And um, the re I, I like. I think most of us are are really leery around the restructuring, like losing what is a current position. But um, to me, it sounds like the restructuring uh, into the teacher leader actually sounds like it's better. So I think we want to kind of be careful about that as well. Donna, I don't know if you have anything to say about that. Well, I was just going to say about the Chromebooks, and um, yes, I I met with uh, Noel and um, and I and Alex and Ginger all met, and they um, Alex very much wants the Chromebooks rather than the Mac Air, so that is a savings, and he would prefer the Chromebooks. So, thank you. Um, does, I I'd love for people to kind of talk a little bit more about Heather's. Comment. All right. I, I will, make sure we talk I will about do this. our last budget meeting. We estimated that for every percent we save is about a hundred thousand dollars. So if, uh, I think it's more like two hundred eighty-nine. Two hundred eighty-nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, if the middle ground is basically saving hundred fifty thousand dollars, and what does the hundred fifty thousand means for staff? Because we've already, uh, like Elizabeth said, cut 
is the wrong word. We already asked Perry that he cannot have a staff that poor guy has been asking for the last two years. And now we may have to cut the high school librarian tech, uh, pet tech, and that's basically hitting our policies. So maybe. I think maybe that's a new position, Nasser, and not a. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think Donna at the beginning, for, did, I took some notes over here, did an excellent job of the creativity they have applied already uh, to it. And maybe if she can highlight what is that 0.5% cut would mean uh, based on her conversation, maybe Heather might be convinced She's right here today. Um, so I'm going to try to rephrase your question in that you want to hear from Donna and the administrators that if we were going to stick with the 6%, do they believe in it? Do they think that it's the right thing to do? Are they comfortable with it? You should be always my translator as well. You've always been great. <laughs> so I'll talk first and maybe the other administrators want to chime in. But again, we spent a long time talking about this and um, talking about what's best for the district. And of course, we'd love to have everything, um, but realizing that we also need to be fiscally responsible. We talked about ways that we can um, get the most for, for the taxpayer's money and what would you know meet our needs. For instance, talking about reducing the library ed tech from the ed tech two to the ed tech one, we talked about do we really need an ed tech two, decided that we, uh, we could use an ed tech one in this position, that they wouldn't be instructing students, it would be basically checking out books, putting books back on the shelf, and an ed tech one could do that. Um, we talked about, Jeff talked you know, he said, well, a half time is better than nothing at all if we had to cut that. So we did, we, we talked a lot about a lot of different scenarios and came up with the 6%. And I think we all felt comfortable with that. Um, but I don't want to speak for them. So if anybody else wants to talk, go for it. Now there's Jeff. If Jeff, I'll ask you, Donna. So on the six percent, I know the French teacher was, or language art teacher was. Has that been accepted, or nothing been cut, or cut is the wrong word to use? So we, the which French, one? The French teacher is, would still be in there. It's still is there. Okay, good. Yes. I just want to make sure of that because. Yeah, and Jeff, Jeff I, okay. I see Jeff. Jeff's hand. Oh, whoops, I had it up and then I meant to put it down again. So, um, I mean, the question was, are, are, are we comfortable? I mean, I think with the goals, goal, the board's charge of getting to 6%, 6 I thought, I think the trade-offs are livable. I think they make sense, having been a part of a, a lengthy discussion about it. Um, I would echo what Donna says. I'd love to have everything I put in the budget. Um, I rarely have that expectation. <laughs> um, I, I think that I think that the, the trade-offs are the right trade-offs. I understand that the Pond Cove has needs in terms of its class size numbers and there's the guidance counselor. And so those are the sorts of trade-offs that are being made. I think, you know, we, I think they're the right trade-offs. If Assuming you're, you want to stick at 6%. Thanks, Jeff. I see Kimberly. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I support um, sticking at 6%. I think, um, I think, you know, it sounds like it was a lot of work, but, but a useful discussion and a, a useful opportunity to really take, take a hard look at our budget and, you know, ask the important questions about what can we, what do we really need and, and what can we reconfigure? I think there is some great creativity. Um, and I, I, I think the six percent um, is what I feel good about. 
Thanks, Kimberly. Would anybody else like to speak to the possibility of going over 6%? So I'm going to chime in and say that um, I am also concerned, like Kimberly, about the tax impact um, even before seeing what was going on with our economy and now even more so. I think we have to balance the um, desire to do the absolute best that we can for our students and um, understand understand that um, it is a tax burden. And so um, I personally would not be in favor of going above 6%. So I guess I sort of would love to kind of do a, like a little bit of a whip around and just, you know, hear from people that it's sort of like, at this point, we are going to settle on 6% and then we can have that discussion around if we have a lower health insurance cost, what do we direct the superintendent to do with it? Because we will not meet again until April 7th, at which point it will be uh, kind of too late for us to um, give the superintendent direction. So tonight we give the direction. So, uh, you know, job one is um, board members, if you could weigh in and say that, um, you are, yes, I'm comfortable at the 6% or no, I am not. And this is not an official vote. This is a straw poll to guide our discussion. Comfortable at the six. Thank you, Laura. And no need to raise hand, just chime in. I'm comfortable at the six. Thank you. Extremely and very comfortable at six. <laughs> Thank you, Nasser. Yeah, I'm also comfortable at six. Thank you, Phil. Same here. Um, I, oh, go ahead, Hope. I, I'm comfortable at six. Um, and I guess I will chime in being the one that was suggesting, I, I thought it was worth the conversation and to reiterate and um, remind all of us of the computers and the work that was done to get the six and that actually some of it is a more beneficial choice and a more preferred choice how it ended up. Um, so I am, and obviously considering the tax implications in this very unstable economy and world that we are in where we don't know where it's going to head, it, head um, I'm okay with the six as well, but I do definitely appreciate the conversation from everyone. Thank you, Heather. I feel like we hope, did we hear from you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just gonna. I was just gonna add something um, about the uncertainty, and I think we sort of sk skirted around that topic a little bit. Um, I don't think any of us knows what things will look like in six months or a year, um, but I don't think we should underestimate the value of what the schools are are serving for our community, and 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 also sort of the the price that's being paid by the school families right now. Um, so I don't, I don't, I feel, while I'm very, very co cognizant of the taxpayers and their um, sort of the pain that may come with these numbers, I feel like it's such a, it's, it's really um, in comparison to what the school families and the schools are paying right now in our sort of our contribution in this this effort. I think it's justified. Excellent point. Thank you, Hope. So at this time, the the board is unanimous in their kind of straw poll that. Um, the superintendent does not need to meet with the A-team again to revise the budget. However, you know, the, the conversation now shifts to what happens if our health insurance increase comes back at a 5%, a 4%. 
Uh, in years past, we've had a zero, and I'm not trying to, but I mean, we've had zero, two, three for a long time, and then um, we had a big jump one year that sort of caught us. So it's, it's very hard to predict, but um, there is a, a little glimmer of hope that it, we might actually come in below six. Uh, what do we want um, Donna and the A-team to do with that? Option one is to um, just lower the expenditures and therefore lowering the tax impact and go forward with this um, proposal that, that we've all just agreed upon. Or do we direct them to get back together and um, bring, you know, bring us a different looking budget on April 7th? using that money, basically. I'll, I'll start if, if you oh, want I'm sorry. to. I, just, I apologize, Laura. I saw Jamie's hand up, but then I okay. muted myself. Would Jamie you mind going go. after Jamie? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know For that you're sure. directing the question to the school board. I, I, um, it's just, just for what it's worth, and so you have the context, um, you know, the current circumstances are going to hit the town a lot harder than the schools in the in the immediate budget forecasting. Um, and so when I referenced before that we had um, canceled our meetings that were scheduled for last week and pushed them out to next week or the following week, um, still to be determined, it's because Matt and John and, and all the department heads are, are having to go back and frankly do a lot of guessing. So one thing that is actually, I think, almost beneficial to the schools is that your revenue be it what it is, is pretty solid and locked in. And your expenses, while shifting maybe a little bit, are, are pretty close to expected and forecastable. Um, the big thing that's gonna change on the town side is that right now, or for the last two weeks, our revenues have changed dramatically. And the bigger problem going forward for budgeting <laughs> is going to be guessing what those revenues are going to be. So. If you think about our monthly meetings and when I give the finance report about, oh, we're always pacing over on excise tax and building permits and all those kinds of things that are revenue generators for the town, none of that's happening right now. Nobody's buying cars, nobody's you know, registering new vehicles, nobody's, there aren't property transfers going on that we're getting those kinds of fee revenues from and all that kind of stuff. So everything other than property taxes has basically you know, come to a grinding halt. And even property taxes, you know, one of the things that we're going to be talking about is do we need to, you know, there, there are some towns that are looking at pushing out their property tax due date for their second installment. One of the things we're going to be considering is whether or not to um, suspend interest payments for late tax payments for a period of months or things like that. There's a lot of things on the table that have a significant revenue impact. I say all that just to say that um, I, I have a feeling that the, this will be one year that the town is going to be in as big a crunch or bigger than the schools have been in for the last several years. And so as you consider the context of, well, if there's found money, you know, in the, in the, in the program, if there's, you know, money that shakes out of the couch cushions, keep that in mind. <laughs> Point well made, Jamie. Thank Thanks. you. Um, I'm going to go to Laura and then Nasser. I was just going to advocate for giving it for uh, getting the percentage down. So giving it back to the taxpayers instead of um, looking how we could spend it. And I appreciated um, Hope's comments. And I've, see, I've heard from so many in the community that like, wow, we would give all our money to the schools now. They deserve it. They deserve like everything. The teachers deserve everything, you know. Um, so I do think that there's that sentiment out there. But there's also, you know, people that I'm sure are struggling. So um, when we can give back, I think we should. Thanks, Laura. Mm -hmm. Nasser? Yeah, I have some very thankful that Jamie's here, and I will ask him another question too, and your input is valuable to us. But well, what is the town decision? I know everything is up in the air about revaluations as well. I did receive something in my yep. mail that my house would be revaluated, and that's going to be implication of most likely taxes going up or evaluation go up in that as well. And there's 
Has they been talked to hold that off a little bit or not? So let me talk two things about the revaluation and, and a great question, Nasser, thanks. So number one is yes. Um, so the, a revaluation is a long process. Um, it takes about a year, a mm -hmm. little bit more than a year to do all the work and, and then go through the process of, of actually assigning the new values to the properties. So the work that was supposed to start next month in April um, was going to be the beginning of the field work. And field work is literally going door to door, house to house to evaluate the property and, and come up with a reassessed value of that property. So in the very near term, um, the tax assessor has pushed that out at least three months um, for both safety concerns, obviously, of being out in people's homes as well as the practical implications of what that work would mean at this time. Um, I think that that will be something that we continue to um, look at and um, forgive the pun, but reassess going forward to see when is an appropriate time to pick that back up again. So the other thing about a revaluation is what prompts it is when your market prices exceed your uh, assessed value by a certain ratio, so when you get outside of that threshold, it's mandated by the state that you re revalue all your properties so that the market price and the, the assessed value price are closer to one another. What we don't know at this point is what the impact of all this will have on real estate prices. Prices were obviously trending very high and on an upward trajectory. Um, at the time when we made the decision to do the revaluation, we had gone outside of those parameters, outside of that threshold, which is what sparked the need to do it. It's quite conceivable, and we don't, I mean, after just two weeks of this happening, we don't even have data to tell us, well, have, have we lost X percent in value? We have no idea. So that'll need to be something that gets looked at as well. Um, so anyway, nothing's happening on the reval at the very least for the next three months, um, but it's going to be something that from a number of different perspectives we're going to have to look at. The last thing I just want to address on the property revaluation too, property revaluations don't inherently mean that you are going to pay more taxes. It's a redistribution across the entire um, uh, set of property in a town. So it has the effect of effectively, some people will pay a little bit more, some people will pay a little bit less, and some people pay kind of the same. Um, there's a sort of a a resetting of the mill rate that happens and your value of your property goes up, but the mill rate assessed to that property goes down. And so for about a third, a third, a third, so some pay a little bit more, some pay a little bit less, and the median group in the middle pays about the same. Understood. So if, I'm sorry, Elizabeth, a following question. If uh, a revenue is expected, right from the revaluation for the town. What does that mean for school budget? Maybe it's an Elizabeth question. If more revenue comes as a result of the revaluation. So I don't think that there's necessarily an increased revenue. To, to, to reiterate the, the point, the last thing I just said, but maybe say it a different way. The entire value of all the property might increase, but the mill rate gets lowered and adjusted so that you're not actually necessarily incurring much more in the way of revenue. It's not necessarily a net positive to the revenue. It's just how you're valuing. And then when you adjust the mill rate, it, it kind of, you know, overall uh, provides you with the same, roughly same amount of revenue. And Marcy, keep me honest on that, right? That's correct, Thank Jimmy. You. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, and it's always a, a local decision, too. When you have that as increased assessed value, you can then, like you said, take that rate down to, to lower the impact eventually on the, on the property tax. So it's, it, it will be a matter of what, you know, what do we si decide to lower it to? You know, if you want to keep things status quo, or right. if maybe you bump it up a little bit, or, you know, lower it, you know, what have you. But I think yeah. most, most communities, when they do a reval, the the overall net impact to, to municipal revenue is typically fairly flat. Thank you, Jamie. 
Nasser, do you feel like you have more to say on that topic? Or um, I see Kimberly has her hand up. No, I, I could have tons and I'll just have a meeting with Jamie on this. Yeah, okay. or, get edu or be educated <laughs> yeah. at the city hall because in Portland we are going through this process. Yeah. I mean, Jamie did point out that, yes, assessed value is usually from a town is lower than market and the goal of revaluation is to come closer to the market taxes or prices of the house. But again, my, my point has been addressed. Thank you. Kimberly? Um, Thank you, Ed Nasser. That was something I was curious about as well. I appreciate uh, your answer, Jamie. Um, is there, I, I guess, one question I had, so my inclination would be to return um, any difference um, to be applied towards uh, lowering the tax impact with the one question of um, the unassigned fund balance. What is that looking like? Um, we were, I think, shooting to get it up to a back up to a hundred thousand. Is that right? right? That's right. And where do we stand? Are, are we on target to get there? Are we looking? What are we? How's that look? Looking on target right now, Kimberly. Okay, um, and we feel like that's a, a sufficient cushion, or would I don't know if there's a possibility to kind of split money and put some into unassigned fund and and the rest I mean I it hopefully benefits the taxpayers at some point it would way. I've been thinking a lot about our fund balance and I think that the, the best part about that is that you would be able to have the choice if if we were to get more to, in our fund balance in the future years um, let's say next year or the year after you would have the opportunity to have a little bit of a cushion that you could then take the burden off the taxpayer in the future years with that it, by building it back up a little bit like we like we've talked about too much is too much right. a little cushion is good and then you have the option to take the burden off the taxpayers if if going into next year looks like a different picture yeah i think too kimberly that um it would be worth having a conversation with town council and the town manager about um if there happens to be any increased revenue from the state after our budget is set um, there have been years where we have had the option to um, put that into unassigned funds and um, there have been other years where that money was directed um, back to the taxpayers and we didn't have that opportunity and frankly I feel that it kind of it, it's going to the same place if we're able to put it into unassigned funds we can then mm -hmm. use it the next year to lower that tax burden. But I think that's a conversation that we can have and it, it doesn't have to happen before we set the budget because um, it, it doesn't happen regularly, but there have been times when we find out like in June that we're getting a little bit more than our original um, state subsidy estimate. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to build up the fund. Yeah. And I see Nasser's hand again. Um, yes, <laughs> so I'm tired of the virtual hands. So just a reminder, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong in reference to this uh, Kim's concern. Um, well, I think we really need those funds in the future now, because I know that our insurance, uh, health insurance for the school does increase when a, when a teacher or a person has a cancer or has a severe issue. Um, and I know with this, with this coronavirus, uh, is this gonna most likely have effect on our insurance, most likely being increased in the future? Marcy or Donna, I don't, I don't have any thoughts on that. You, do you have any thoughts on that, Donna? I don't, I don't think so. Hard, hard to tell. Yeah. And if, and if it did, reason, everybody would- The whole reason we need the funds to be there. So we've heard from several people um, about with the desire to um, direct the superintendent to give any um, additional savings uh, from health insurance to um, reducing our spending increase and thus reducing the tax impact. Um, would other board members please weigh in on that?
Yeah, I'll, so, I'll go. I'm I'm comfortable with that too. I think part of it is, um, you know, like, I think in ordinary times it would be nice to see if we had some additional monies to look at that chart, and that's what I was going over and over again. And you know, maybe it would be great to, you know, keep a position of, of one instead of 0.5 if we could. But I also understand, you know, sort of what, struggling with the fact that to be consistent, I have said I'm comfortable with that six number. So I'm comfortable with it now. Um, and that means if any additional rubber comes in, hearkening to what Jamie said particularly, I think we owe it to the taxpayers and the town side as, as we sort of struggle with the revenues to, to not increase above that. So that, that's kind of where I am at this point on that. Thank you, Phil. Okay. I agree with that. Hope. I agree. Thank you, Hope. And I am I'm right there with what everybody else has said. I think to support the taxpayers and I think it's a responsible way to approach it. Thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. um, I agree too. I think if we all decide that we're comfortable with the scenario that that we're comfortable with it and that um, anything that we get back, it, it, it is kind of, it's responsible and it's, um, it's, it's, I feel it's like the right thing to do. Um, so adding my voice, I think that, that that's our direction, Donna. I think you've got, Thank you. I think you've got clarity. And so then I think that we have sort of covered all the topics and um, I, you know what to do. <laughs> It, you know, when you get the final numbers. So um, before we close this meeting, um, again, although the only member of the, the public, quote unquote, that has been here is Town Council Finance Chair Jamie Garvin, I do want to thank him. He's been an incredibly valuable uh, part of this conversation. So thank you, Jamie for uh, putting up with our technical difficulties and uh, sharing your information with us. And um, this is the time if you as a member of the public would like to speak again, I'd love to give you that opportunity. I think you've heard enough from me. Thanks though, I appreciate it. And <laughs> I've been, I, like I said, um, I hadn't, you know, hadn't been at a lot of your meetings. Um, I have followed along and, and kept track of all the details and appreciate all the work everybody's doing. I know. Um, how much goes into it, particularly from the staff point of view and, and the back and forth. So um, thank you. It's been, it's been good to follow. I think you guys are, you know, going through another great process this year. Um, and I'll be interested to see, you know, where, where things come out on our end, because it's a big unknown for us at the moment. So thanks. thanks thank Jamie. you. Jamie. Thank you. So I'd like to also um, thank everybody for the work that you're doing. Um, this is, I'm not the school board chair, but I am gonna take this opportunity to just give you my gratitude and my appreciate for appreciation for everything that you're doing. I'm directing this um, primarily at the A-team and Donna. Uh, I am incredibly impressed. I think you're doing an admirable job. We, and. To, to come back to us with budget, which is incredibly important, but somehow um, almost seems mundane in the, in the face of what you're doing right now. So um, from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you. And I hope everybody gets a nap at some point. Um, we, we in this household appreciate you. And as I look um, at the faces on my screen, I can tell that the school board very much appreciates you. Um, so with that, I'm going to announce that our um, next budget meeting, which I hope is our final budget workshop, is scheduled for Tuesday, April 7th, 2020, at which point our agenda will be very brief. Um, it should just be uh, detailing the, the final budget with the actual health insurance increase. At that time, we will take a straw poll to send that budget to our um, to put it on the agenda for our business meeting where we will have to adopt it before we can deliver it to town council. Um, Donna, on the schedule, there was no, um, not that it really matters, but uh, I guess we'll just keep it with a Zoom meeting. It's not obvious, it's not going to be in the high school. Um, no, we'll do a Zoom. <laughs> we'll do a Zoom. And, um, 
So thank you again, everybody. Um, it's great to see your faces and good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you.